everyone, this is Dan Bullinger, Pioneer Dairy Specialist, and for today's Feed for Thought, I want to help you sift through all the data that you have post-harvest from your corn silage crop this year and enable you to make a better decision going into the next growing season when it comes to product selection. First thing we want to ask ourselves when we're looking at, at strip trials or third-party data or our own field maps or what have you, is, in, is the data even any good? Um, intrinsic variability is, is dominant within corn silage, especially relative to what we're used to in corn grain data sets. We have tremendous amount of hybrid variability by micro-growing environments, not only uh, across different fields, but within a field and within even strips within a field. You add to that uh, sampling error as we're taking a large volume of corn silage material, narrowing it down to a very small quantity of a non-homogeneous uh, material of grain and fodder that can easily separate and shift in its ratio, especially if that material gets a little too dry. Um, and then it's subsampled yet again at the laboratory. So all kinds of opportunity for sampling error along the way. I like to verify whether or not that data is even reasonable by taking the yield in tons per acre at 35% dry matter times percent starch uh, as a percentage times the conversion factor of 0.2 and that gives us bushels per acre equivalent around the time of silage harvest. That gives us an idea, is this data even reasonable? If we end up with some outlandish numbers, such as I've seen 450 bushel of the acre across many sample sets uh, in the upper Midwest, then those are red flags that, hey, maybe this data isn't any good. And no data is better than bad data. The other thing we need to keep in mind is we don't want to compare across different silage maturities of hybrids. And finally, recognize that as a plant stays out in the field uh, and matures naturally through the harvest window, we're going to gain starch, which adds more yield. And if the plant is healthy, we may or may not uh, sacrifice some fiber digestibility along the way. And what that means is that if we harvest a side-by-side -side or a strip trial uh, today, we might get one set of data, one set of rankings and relative uh, comparisons. But if we wait just a few days, we might get totally different results. And we need to be aware of that variability. So what are you to do? Well, the suggestion, first of all, is to have many replications. Ideally, you have 20, but those are really hard to come by nowadays. So you need to keep this in mind as you look at the data and information in front of you that most of the variability is going to show up first in the quality information. So don't put a lot of stock in fiber digestibility and starch content. It's extremely important to you, your nutritionist, your cows, but it's also the most vulnerable to harvest timing in micro-growing environments. That's going to skew the information you're looking at. You can have more confidence in yield information as well as agronomic observations you make in the field. And those two, uh, you're more likely to have impact to benefit your farm going down the road. Especially with agronomics, if I have a healthy plant, I have more opportunity with a wider harvest window to capture more of that yield, that starch, and retaining the fiber digestibility uh, to give me a better probability of success as I feed that to my cows. Pioneer has historically been very strong in yield and agronomics and continues to be to this day. And countless dairy farms cannot be wrong as they're building an abundance of feed inventory while having outstanding cow performance with Pioneer products. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.